Hi everybody and welcome to Truck King Headquarters, aka Dad's Office. Now today we want to talk to you about the Ford Bronco and not just the brand new Ford Bronco, but the history of the Ford Bronco. Now I'm a 1990s baby so I'm not really qualified to talk you through the history and that's why I had to enlist the old man here because he's been around since the Bronco first came on the scene. He can provide some context, right? Yes, I suppose. I mean, <laughs> I was a little kid when the first Bronco came along, however. Hey, you were still around, right? Yeah. So anyways, in this video, we're going to walk through the history of the Bronco, why it started, when it started. We'll show you some really wacky Bronco concepts that came uh, about over the years. And then we're just going to talk about, you know, why the Bronco came back, why right now, and then of course how it stacks up to the Jeep Wrangler. So that's all coming up right now. Make sure you stay tuned. So the first thing we're looking at here on the screen is a Bronco concept that was shown at the Detroit Auto Show in 2004. And I actually was there and I saw this and I can tell you that the atmosphere in the arena at that time was pretty electric because people saw this and they were like, yeah, we're going to get this. And then 16 years went by. You know, the question is, you know, what took so long? And of course, why did it come out now? Mm -hmm. Well. There's a lot of different reasons, but there's one key reason, and that is uh, Jeep Wranglers. And Jeep Wrangler sales in 2019, over 200,000 units, 228,000 actually. And then if you look at all the Jeep models, they're hitting almost a million sales a year. So you're telling me that people over in Dearborn aren't envious of that? Exactly, and they're looking at it, and they know they have a nameplate like Bronco, which might not be right on the same level as Jeep, but it's close, right? This name has really built up a lot of love over the years. Without a doubt. I mean, the history of Detroit is one guy does one thing and the other guys go, hey, we got to get in on that. <laughs> okay, so you show me a successful vehicle coming out of Detroit and I'll show you the other guys and what their answers were to that. However, Bronco is kind of interesting in as much as, again, it was first launched in 66 because those era Jeeps in the 60s were gaining some traction. So Ford decided to go this way. Now, no this, pun intended. Yeah, now this <laughs> is a long before we really had a big off-roading crowd. And when you look at the original uh, sales literature for Bronco, they were aimed at institutional users, whether it was fire departments, search and rescue, forest, forest rangers, um, etc., etc. And as I was telling Steve when he mentioned Bronco to me earlier, I said, you know, the weird thing for me growing up as a teenager in the 70s was that every gas station had a little Ford Bronco with a snowplow on it. <laughs> and that's where I know Bronco from, not being on the road. And the reality is, is that over a 12-year run, uh, Bronco only built about a quarter of a million units. So consider that the F-150 pumps out 900,000 a year. A year. A quarter of a million over 12 years is really not very much at all. But the weird thing is, okay, so it goes away in 77. And we get other versions of the Bronco. We get what I call the fat version. And then we get the Bronco 2, which was the tiny version. However, around that time, in the late 80s right into the beginning of the 90s, a lot of the classics magazines start featuring these Broncos from the late 60s, particularly the early 70s models, because they started to get a little more um, optioned out. And guys start looking for them, and they start rebuilding them. And of course that moves along with the rise of the off-roading community, right? So kind of like back with the 57 Chevy or the 32 Ford, guys 
went out and they looked for these Broncos. Why? Because they were super classic? No, because they were dirt cheap. And simple, right? Twin axles, leaf springs, dead simple to work on. Modified. Real easy to find, real easy to fix. You could do the body work with a ball peen hammer and they were cheap. Okay, so all of a sudden they start getting built up. Then the mod crowd gets a hold of them and they start building some really cool wild stuff. For sure. And then all of a sudden around 2,000 people wake up and go, Holy crap, look at these cool old Broncos. Well, the weird thing is they weren't that cool when they were being built, <laughs> but some models, that just happens. Yeah. 20, 30 years later, they suddenly start getting cool. Yeah. Right? So Ford was aware that this was happening. So they've always put that in their back pocket. And we'll show you some of the concepts that they came up with over those years where they were like, you know what, we got to capitalize on this Bronco thing. Yeah, obviously these concepts, and they're just wacky. They were trying to show off just these crazy ideas. Just take a look at some of these wacky Bronco concepts to see what the Ford engineers were thinking. First up, this is the 66 Ford Bronco Dunes Duster. Once again, chasing that off-road crowd. And the last concept, probably the funniest, this 1980 Bronco Lobo concept. Obviously they are going after the desert crowd, the cowboy crowd, um, the half doors here, that's a theme through these concepts, but this thing is definitely really 1980s and pretty wacky looking. Now there's one more concept here we have to talk about. This is the 1989 DM1 concept. And frankly, it doesn't even look like a Bronco anymore. Bronco 2 was coming to the end of its life cycle and obviously Ford was looking to redesign it and this is just one direction they thought they might go. And what's making me laugh is this almost looks like a precursor to the Bronco Sport of today. This kind of looks like a small crossover, you know, a small car up on stilts. And, and, and this is actually where we want to get to. Ford has adopted a new strategy moving into the future and it doesn't involve any cars whatsoever. They've decided that they are a truck and SUV company. And I think that's also where Bronco comes from now, right? Is when Ford made this pivot, they got rid of their cars. Obviously someone then said, this is the time for Bronco because we need a strong SUV family. And that's the other thing about Bronco. It's not just one vehicle, right? It's two, it's a family of vehicles. And that's playing up on what Jeep does. They have the Wrangler and then underneath it, of course, the Renegade, the Cherokee, the Compass. And that's what Ford is trying to emulate, really going after that Jeep sales model of having the big Bronco and then the smaller Bronco Sport. And that's exactly right because they've got to be strong in that field. Their trucks lead the way. If it wasn't for the F-Series, Ford would have uh, been buried a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So they've looked at the market, they've said look at how, how strong SUVs are, they're dumping everything else. and. They've already seen the off-road crowd. You know, that's that's a market that's been plowed by Jeep. So now they're finally jumping in. And that's why it took 16 years to go from concept to reality because there's been a lot of waffling back and forth. What should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Well, now they've really only got one direction. They can only go with their money makers. Yep. So what Dad just said is true. Ford has to focus on what makes money. They've decided it's SUVs and pickup trucks. But now, is the Bronco really going to be successful? And I think that comes down to, well, how does it stack up to the Jeep Wrangler? Because you just can't mention this new Bronco without then mentioning Jeep in the same sentence. And obviously Ford targeted Jeep. And that story is clear when you look at the numbers because the numbers on the new Bronco are all just a little bit better than the Jeep. They clearly had that spec sheet in hand and they made sure that the Bronco was gonna beat it out by a bit. And I think one of the big things Ford did, because it grabbed a lot of headlines, 35 inch tires and they called it the Sasquatch package. You know what? I think another thing that Ford took from Jeep is you gotta have fun with a vehicle like this. The Bronco's all about having fun, right? You can't be real serious. So now you can get a Bronco Sasquatch with 35 inch tires, lockers front and rear, long travel suspension. Um, the Bronco's not phoning it in. This thing is absolutely legit. You know, the mechanicals absolutely matter when you get right down to it. But the fun part of this Bronco release and really this entire off-roading segment is the culture of it. There is a very ingrained kind of a, we're in a club, an exclusive club. Mm -hmm. So anybody that drives a Jeep, there's the Jeep wave. We all know. Y'all wave at each other, right? I borrow a Jeep every once in a while. People are always waving at me. I'm like, what the hell are you waving at me for? Because <laughs> I only, I only borrow. Not used to it. But I, I was just saying to Steve the other day. I mean, they're 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 inventing 
the legend as mm -hmm. they go. And I wouldn't be shocked at all if there's a bunch of Ford guys sitting in a boardroom somewhere trying to come up with a Bronco wave, okay? <laughs> so they're, they're not going to wait for it to happen organically. They're going to come up with it, and then they're going to start showing it to you in the ads so that we'll have that as well. And that goes along with this, because let's talk about mall crawlers for just a second. We know how many Jeeps never, ever see dirt, Yeah. okay? Well... Bronco's going to be very much the same with a lot of their vehicles. They'll never see dirt. But I do dig the fact, much like Jeep, that they've never lost their authenticity. Okay? They really can do that. And I swear there's Jeep guys and now Bronco guys who will go to, you know, parties and drink with their buddies and go, yeah, you wouldn't believe what I could do with my Jeep or my Bronco, even though they never have. But yeah. we'll see how that moves forward. I mean, it, 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 bottom line, it sells. It, it absolutely sells. does. And and what this is going to come down to in my head is actually the staying power of the Bronco. Because I think we all know there's going to be a bunch of Broncos sold right off the bat. I mean, there's already a ton of reservations for the Bronco. I think it's going to be about staying power. After the initial blast of Bronco owners, you know, a year or two years down the line, are people still going to be going for Broncos? And is it going to be enough to actually pull Wrangler owners out of their Jeeps? To me, those are the big two questions. However, you know what, Ford has set themselves up really well to compete in this arena and I just can't wait to move forward, first of all, and drive one of these Broncos, and then second of all, you know, see what happens with this sales race. It's going to be interesting, there's no doubt about that. So one thing Bronco has going for it is that Jeep has always had capability, but for years Jeep owners complained about the interiors, and this, that was fixed, but you know, incrementally over, over a long period of time. So Ford looked at it and said, no, let's do it all, let's do it now, mm -hmm. and I think that was a smart move. They went all out on these interiors, and it's great because even the base Bronco is getting a big screen up there in the center stack, although one of my personal favorite uh, you know, aspects to this new interior, marine grade vinyl seating. Basically the same seats you're going to get in a boat. That's what you're going to get in the new Bronco if you choose them. But that's super cool for getting wet and muddy and dirty and being able to just clean up your seats. Um, and I think to Dad's point, what Ford has been able to do is learn from Jeep's mistakes. The interior is a big one. The other one is how it drives on road and that has everything to do with the front suspension. The IFS in the Bronco should mean that cruising to the mall will be a little more comfortable, a little bit less hectic than driving down the road in a Jeep Wrangler. And uh, I think people might gravitate towards that as well, but we're going to have to wait and see. But I'll tell you one thing for sure. It's exciting to have the competition. The auto industry is never as great as when they're competing head to head. And that's what we're seeing here right now. Absolutely. So everyone, you know what? I think that's it for this video. Of course, we can't wait to get our hands on one of these new Broncos. As soon as we do, we will be giving you guys the scoop in a brand new video. Until then, make sure you keep on coming back to the channel where we're going to keep on pumping out pickup truck and Bronco content. As always, go below, leave us a comment, hit like and hit subscribe, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.